In this video, I will explain what audiences in Google Analytics 4 are. And no, audiences are not segments. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And if you want to stay up to date with GA4, consider subscribing. Audiences in Google Analytics 4 allow you to build lists of users to whom you can later show your ads. Also, you can use audiences to compare data in your reports. For example, how this audience performed against that audience. Last but not least, you can even automatically create new events in GA4 when people enter those audiences. Why is that useful? Let me show you. As of the moment of recording this video, there are two ways how you can create audiences. The first one is to go to configure on the left side of the interface and then go to audiences. Here you can click new audience and then you can choose whether you want to use the template, for example, general template or maybe some predictive template, or you can create a custom audience from scratch. By the way, what you should keep in mind that Google Analytics 4 is still changing a lot. And when you're watching this video, there's a chance that something will look different in the interface compared to my video. So if you're facing something like that, please check the description of this video because I may have some updates right there. I may add some links to other content that is more up to date because unfortunately on YouTube, I cannot edit certain parts of the video. Anyway, back to the main topic. Audiences in Google Analytics 4 are mainly used for several purposes. The first one is to use this audience as a retargeting audience. And later in this video, I will show you how to connect Google Analytics with Google Ads and then see those audiences there. And another use case is to apply audiences in comparisons. I will also explain this briefly later in this video. The best way to learn is to see some actual examples. So let's say that we want to create a new audience of people who we considered as engaged. Even though there are some engagement metrics in Google Analytics 4, let's say that I want to build an audience of people who have scrolled below the 50% height of my page and also have stayed at least for one minute on a site or actually on a page in this case. To achieve this, I have configured Google Tag Manager to send two events to Google Analytics 4. The first one is scroll event, and that one is sent when a visitor scrolls below 25, 50, 75, and 90% of the page height. And then the other event is called time spent. And I fire that event after 60 seconds on a page are spent. In this video, I will not be explaining how I created those events and how I configured them because this is a topic for another video. In this video, I will be focusing more on the audience building stuff. So first, let's say that I want to include users that have scrolled and it's percent scrolled value. This is a dimension that I have registered in my property, matches regular expressions, matches regex, and then 50 or, which is a pipe in regular expressions, 75 or 90, and then click apply. So once I add this first condition, you can already see a preview right here. It will soon stop calculating. So right now we have narrowed down to 52% of all sessions, but also I want to include users who have spent time on my site. And as I've said with Google Tech Manager, I'm sending a time spent event after one minute is spent on a page. Click it like this. And now I've narrowed down to 7% of all sessions. However, I am not done yet because right now I will include all users who have scrolled and spent some time on my page on any session. For example, in one session, a visitor could have scrolled and then in the other session, that visitor could have spent 60 seconds on a page. But let's say that I want to narrow down this and I want to make sure that scroll and time spent occurs on the same session. That is why I have to click right here and switch from across all sessions to within the same session. And once I click this, the number of sessions should go down. Let's click it. And now I see that the number is indeed smaller. So this is an audience that I could later show my ads to because I presume that they are more engaged and maybe I should show them some ads to move them further down the funnel. Now let's name the audience, for example, engaged users and click save. And here you will see that audience that says that it has less than 10 users. Now here's the thing with audiences. Audiences are not retroactive. So now this audience will start collecting data about visitors only from this moment after I created it. So those 4,000 sessions that you saw in the preview, they unfortunately are not eligible to be targeted right now. So the best practice here would be to create your audiences as soon as you can. 
So this was one place where you can create an audience by going to configure and audiences. The other place where you can create audiences is in the explore section. So click explore and then choose freeform. In the segments section, you can create a new segment. Now in this lesson, I will not be diving deeper into how to create new segments because I have a separate video for that. So if you want to learn more about segments, take a look at the description of this video. But nevertheless, here's a very quick overview. So in the segments section, you can select, for example, user segment or maybe session segment, click here, then add your conditions. And then you can click this checkbox to build an audience. After you enter all the conditions in the segment, give it a name and then click Save and Apply, an audience will be also created. And that audience will be available then in the configure and audiences right here. Now, there is one thing that is quite inconvenient, in my opinion, and I'm not sure if Google Analytics 4 will ever fix it. But if you go to audiences, and you want to edit your existing audience, unfortunately, you won't be able to do that. So if you go to audiences, and then click three dots right here on any audience, and then edit, you will notice that you can change only the name, and then you can create an audience trigger that I will explain soon. Unfortunately, you cannot change the conditions of the audiences. So if you really, really need to do some changes to the audience, you will have to delete the existing one, or in this case, it's archive, and then create a new one, which is not ideal if you're running ads, because as I've said, audiences are not retroactive. Now, speaking of useful features, there is a very welcome addition to audiences compared to Universal Analytics. So if you go to the audience, and I mean to edit the audience, so you should click three dots next to an audience and select edit. Here you can create an audience trigger. Now this trigger has nothing to do with triggers in Google Tag Manager. Those are completely different. But that does not mean that audience triggers are useless in Google Analytics 4. So click create new. And then what happens is that you can configure Google Analytics 4 to automatically create an event if a visitor enters this audience. So if a visitor scrolls below 50% and spends at least a minute on a page, I want to see a separate event in my report. And let's say that I will call it engaged visit or something like that. Also, based on what I've seen, it is a good practice to add some prefix to the event name so that you would know that this event came from the audience trigger. You could enter something like audience. However, some event names might be longer and there is a character limit on the event name. That is why to keep names shorter, I usually do like this. AU, which stands for audience, and then the name of the event. And by default, this event will fire once per membership duration. So for example, if a visitor scrolls below certain threshold and spends one minute and then does that, let's say today, then this event will be dispatched. And if the visitor on the next page does the same thing within the next 30 days, then this event will not be dispatched again. However, you can click this checkbox, which says log an additional event when audience membership refreshes. So in other words, every time a visitor completes both of these steps in the same session, then this event will be automatically generated in your reports. So if you want that, then make sure this checkbox is enabled and then click save. Also, one more thing that I noticed is that I should have probably entered just the 50% mark right here, because right now this condition will be looking for all three thresholds, which is 50, 75 and 90. All I care right now actually is just when the visitor scrolls below 50%. If that visitor scrolls below 75%, I don't care about that because the 50% mark has been already reached. Anyway, once you configure the audience trigger, then click save. So from this moment, every time a visitor matches this criteria, which is scrolls below 50% and spends one minute on a page, we will have this event in our reports. And in fact, you can test this by yourself because you will also be seeing this in the debug view of Google Analytics 4 as well, and in real time reports and all other reports. However, when it comes to other reports like exploration reports or standard reports, you should wait for the next day to start seeing that event in your reports. Also, if you are in the audience list, you can click on the audience name, and then you will see some basic data about that audience. However, personally, I don't find this kind of report useful because it doesn't tell you much. There are other places where you could use audiences. For example, if you go to your regular reports, you will see some data like this. 
And as you can see right here, the data is coming from all users. But if you want to compare also how that engaged audience is performing compared to all users, you can click add comparison right here. And then on the right, this sidebar will appear. And then you can select the dimension based on which you want to do the e comparison. And one of the dimensions, if you click right here, is audience name. And then here in the audience name list, you can select your engaged users and then click OK and apply. And now you're probably wondering, why are you seeing zeros right here? Well, I have said that before and I will repeat this. Audiences are not retroactive, unfortunately. So since I have just created this audience, there is no data populated yet. And it started collecting data only from the moment when I created that audience. So if, for example, I do this kind of comparison next week, then I will have one week of data about engaged users, and then I will see their data somewhere right here. For example, here I have a comparison where I'm using a completely different audience. This is a completely different property. So here, as you can see, I have all users and I have the data about that particular audience. And this audience is in use probably for several months at least. So I have collected enough data. If you want to do ad hoc analysis and play around with data retroactively as well, then you will have to use segments in the explorations right here. So you should go to explore, then choose report template, create a report, and then add segments right there. I will not be explaining how to work with segments in this video because I have a separate tutorial on segments and you will find the link to that below the video. Now let's go back to the configure and audiences. And I want to briefly mention one more feature. So if you go to audiences, click new audience, then you will have suggested audiences right here. If you have implemented e-commerce tracking, then you can quickly create a new audience based on this template. If you have a high volume of traffic and purchases, then in the predictive audiences section, you will see audiences that will be eligible for you. For example, you will be able to create audiences of people who will likely buy within the next seven days. But as I've said, to use these audiences, you need to have a high volume website with a lot of purchases. Below the video, you will find a link on some of the requirements in order to start using predictive metrics. One of them is that you must implement Google Analytics for e-commerce tracking, and I mean at least purchase tracking, and then you also must have at least 1,000 returning users who have triggered a purchase event, and then at least 1,000 users who did not trigger that event. And that must happen within the previous 28 days. I cannot guarantee that these requirements will never change. That is why you should go to that page and you will find the link below the video and check the latest requirements that are listed in the prerequisites section right here. One more thing to keep in mind is the limit of audiences. Right now you can create up to 100 audiences per single Google Analytics 4 property. For small businesses, this limit is okay, but for larger businesses, this might be a challenge. So keep that in mind. And one final thing that I promised to explain in this video is linking Google Analytics 4 to Google Ads so that we could use these audiences in Google Ads as remarketing audiences. So to do that, go to the admin in Google Analytics 4, then in the property column, click Google Ads linking, then click link, and then select a Google Ads account that you want to link. So click right here, choose Google Ads accounts. And here you will see a list of accounts that you can use. So let's say that I want to link with this one. I will click this checkbox and click confirm, then click next. Then I will leave all these settings as they are, click next and then submit. Then you will see that the link is created and then go to Google Ads to check whether you are seeing those audiences in their interface. Also, we will have to enable Google Signals in our property. To do that, you should go to the admin of Google Analytics 4, then data settings right here, and then data collection. Here you will have to enable Google Signals data collection. So click get started, then click continue, activate. Obviously before doing that, you should carefully read what does it mean, and you might even need to consult with your lawyers about this. So when you enable Google Signals, you should also then accept and acknowledge the data collection. So you should click right here. Obviously, you should read everything as I've said right here. And after you do all of these steps, you will need to wait for up to 48 hours. And then you will start seeing your audiences in Google Ads. And you can do that by going to Google Ads, Tools and Settings, then Shared Library and Audience Manager. In other cases, the menu might look like this. So again, you should go to Shared Library and Audience Manager. Click it. And here, as I've said, after about 48 hours, maybe 24 hours, but still not immediately, you will start seeing your audiences right here. 
if you're wondering where can you find later those audiences while you are creating new campaigns. So this is a very brief overview. You can go to, for example, campaigns, click plus to add new campaign, then new campaign. Let's say that I will choose this one. Again, I'm just quickly clicking everything just to go to the right place. So let's say that I want to get more website visits then continue. And then one of the blocks here is audiences. You can click it and then enter the name of the audience that you have in your audience manager. For example, I think that one of the names contain the word lead. And yeah, here's one of the audiences that I have in my audience manager. So you can click it and select it and the rest goes out of the scope of this tutorial. And that is how you can create and use audiences in Google Analytics 4. Remember, you can create your audiences in the configure section and you can also turn your exploration segments into audiences. Audiences are not retroactive, meaning that they will start collecting data only from the moment when you create them. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.